Gertrude Kolmer was a German Jewish poet who was writing before the war and perished in Auschwitz in 1943. I had never heard of her before I literally bumped into her work by accident in 2007 and was immediately intrigued to think about setting some of her work to music. And indeed, the second piece I wrote is the piece that we're talking about today, The Angel in the Forest, which is a kind of cantata written for James Gilchrist, six cellos and a small chorus. I would describe The Angel in the Forest as a very bleak poem indeed. On the face of it, it really offers very little hope. And yet something about the way that Gertrude Colmer writes, there's this kind of glorious, subtle, soulful ambiguity in how she writes, where somehow the dark and the light emerge together in the most extraordinary way. So that's a challenge for a composer to know how to, how to begin to approach that. One of the best ways to do it, I found, was to somewhat offset some of the darkness of the poetry with music which may not seem stylistically obvious. There's kind of elements of tango from time to time. There's a, a walking bass. Um, this kind of playful, long melismatic squirrel episode, which I particularly love hearing James sing. So the music is set as a dissonance in some ways against the darkness and bleakness of the poetry. So one of the things that um, I particularly enjoyed about working with Marshall Hayne and the Flying Lizards and Eye to Eye back in the late 70s and 80s, what I like to call my pop years, is that um, the recording was seen as, as the definitive product. That was the thing we were really aiming for. And we've done that here. I've always loved recording. And although it would be fantastic to take the, to the piece out on the road, it's its recorded iteration, which I feel so strongly about. And I hope and think that it works really well as an EP, as a, a almost 30 minute piece, as an overall listening experience. To some extent, the angel in the forest tells a story. The protagonist is clearly somebody who's feeling out of kilter in the world and rejected by the world and finds herself in an unreal place, perhaps, in the forest. Not alone, she's with somebody else. We never really know who it is. But they together meet this unreal being. They suddenly are there with somebody else. Who it is, we're never sure. This angel who appears. And really the description is quite minimal, but the effect is huge and it turns their world upside down. And the other thing that really strikes me later on is when the companion of whoever the I character in the poem is, is described as being my home. It's extraordinary because we know that the poet has taken strangers into her own home. And far from saying, now my home is yours, she says, now you, are my home. It's a very powerful sentiment. So I'm not alone in a conviction that Gertrude Colmer is a very tragically neglected poet. And if this piece can do something to bring her to a, a wider audience in some small way, I would feel absolutely thrilled.